Hey guys, we're standing outside of Chelsea Fire and Rescue Station 31, and I'm here talking with Lieutenant Charlie Boyd. Charlie, we appreciate you being here with us. Thanks, sir. First of all, tell us uh, how long you've been a firefighter and what got you into this? I've been a firefighter for just over 20 years. I've been with the city of Chelsea uh, 10 years. Uh, I'm a lieutenant here, so my, my role here is I'm the company officer, so I'm the gentleman that rides in the right front seat. Uh, I oversee the operation of the particular vehicle I'm assigned to and the crew members assigned to me. also work uh, for the City of Homewood. I'm a battalion chief with the City of Homewood, and I've been there for just over 15 years. Um, what actually got me into wanting to be a fireman was years ago, uh, growing up in Homewood, uh, my apartment caught fire. And I can remember being a little kid, five years old, and literally standing across the road uh, at the playground watching the apartment burn and was fascinated. So it just stuck with me for years and I got to high school and thought, you know, that's kind of silly. I think I'm gonna do something else. Went to college for a couple years, followed my buddies, thought, yeah, I want to do that. And then I realized, woke up one morning and said, I, I want to give this a try. Yeah. And it's the best decision ever made. It's the uh, greatest career on the face of the earth, no doubt. Um, I've seen a lot of positive things over the years. And I've said, I've seen, you've seen some negative things out there, but uh, being able to go out and help somebody every day is, that is, that is the main goal in the service that we provide. It, it's a servant heart and, and that's what I'm here to do. That's, that's what I was about to say. With this profession, you would absolutely have to have a servant's heart. Yes, sir. Because that is what you're constantly doing. Absolutely. The, uh, uh, and it's a good thing as far as you being fascinated that you were fascinated to actually put the fire out instead of starting it. Yes. So that, that's <laughs> always a plus. Go out. That's yes, a plus. Yes. So let me ask you, uh, we were talking earlier and uh, I alluded to 9-11. Yes, sir. Because any images that you see with 9-11 other than the obvious, you see the firemen, you see the rescue vehicles. How did 9-11 change a firefighter? How did it change being a firefighter? Yes, sir. Well, and I, with that, I'd like to start off with, with the impact in New York City itself. I mean, clearly it changed how New York City firemen approach various situations, the biggest thing being terrorism, uh, their preparedness level, but you also see guys now who are dealing with 9-11 related illnesses, uh, who are dying of cancer, you know, even to this day. So it's impacted a lot of lives for many, many years to come. For those that, you know, outside of New York City and other parts of the country, the biggest thing that I saw was uh, an increase in level of training in uh, terrorism preparedness. Uh, also being able to work interoperability. So in other words, being able to work with other agencies, uh, not only at, you know, interdepartment or with, with a police agency or our neighboring agencies, you know, like Cobb Valley, North Shelby, Pelham, it increased that ability for everybody to be on the same page, to, to all speak the same language when we're dealing with a particular incident. What is this type of incident? How do we respond to this incident? So getting that training and that lingo all in the same get in the same boat and everybody understand that, I think that was a lot of what you saw come out of 9-11 and being prepared to deal with what we call multi-level incidents. So you have, you know, low-level incidents where we go out every day here, a medical fire wreck, or you have a major incident where we had the April 27th tornadoes that came through. And you see multiple agencies in the state and federal uh, agencies work together to mitigate the problem. That, that was what you saw, I think, the blessing that came out of 9-11 is, mm -hmm. is getting everybody on the same page to be able to handle anything uh, that, that comes our way. Well, if you notice behind us, you guys have a brand new toy. Yes, sir. Tell us about that. Absolutely. This is uh, a 2019. It's a Pierce. Uh, it's a 107-foot Ascendant Aerial. Uh, Pierce is a manufacturer based in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, they are a, uh, one of the uh, more well-known uh, manufacturers, uh, not only in the United States, but across the world. This particular aerial that you see is actually one, in my personal opinion, that has changed firefighting for a lot of departments, suburban departments. Used to, you couldn't get an aerial device on what we call a single rear axle, so we just have one wheel axle in, in the back. You couldn't get one really over 75 feet. Right. If you did, you generally had to have a tandem axle. It made it longer, it made it heavier, it made it bulkier. And uh, a few years ago, Pierce developed this aerial. Uh, it's 107 feet, which is the longest that you can get from Pierce at this time, uh, and on a single rear axle. So what that did for us is it gave us, well, hey, now we have ability to work with a little more reach, uh, a little more functionality, and it makes the truck lighter uh, than what some of the uh, previous predecessors. 
So that that for us was, was a game changer. Right. Uh, it, it really was one when we went, look, we were able to take an exploratory trip a couple years ago and we, we were sold. So what we did, we start the process of you start writing your specification. And actually this, this actually started about four years ago. So by the time you start getting everything together, you get the ball rolling, you get with the city leaders and start worrying about financing and things like that. When it all comes together, it takes you a few years. But for us, this is, uh, this is something that'll last us 25, 30 years. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal piece of equipment. Um, and it's also, uh, it has pumping capability, whereas there you can buy some aerial devices as strictly a ladder. So this one serves as a pumper. It carries 450 gallons of water, uh, 50 gallons of foam. We can carry five firemen, uh, advanced life support equipment, all of our extrication equipment, uh, technical rescue for medical rope rescue things like, or wrecks and uh, rope rescue things like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's a game changer for us that we were able to get into uh, this length and class of aerial. Well, and uh, this bad boy is not a hand-me-down either. Okay. From what I understand, this was actually customized and built from the ground up. Why is that so important? Well, one thing it, it is, is we want to customize what works for us in Chelsea. Now, what a lot of us have done that have served on what we call the apparatus committee is we all work in different departments. And what we do is we're able to come together with a multitude of ideas. Will this work for us? And you know, we can pick through, yeah, this option, this option, this will work. No, this won't necessarily work. When you put all these heads together and all these ideas and you sort through them at the end of the day, this is the product that you come up with. And it's a phenomenal product because you get a lot of great ideas that you're able to incorporate. But you're also working with the manufacturer. There's limitations that you can and can't do. And when you're able to work within that, this, this is what you get. Um, it, for us, it's one of those that customization is, is key, the details are key, and there is no other truck like it in the world. Um, unless we ordered a twin, in this case we didn't, there's no other truck. Now there may be similar features and things of that, but there's only one, you know, Chelsea Ladder 30. Right, right. Yes. Well, before I ask you the final question, uh, I, I want to tell you that as a resident uh, here in Chelsea, we certainly appreciate what you guys do. Thank you, sir. Uh, you guys have unfortunately been out to my house uh, once before, but everything worked out real well. Uh, and final question is this, truth or myth? You guys get calls to get cats out of trees. There's very much truth to that. Uh, I have not done it here. I've done it at my other department in Homewood. I've done it twice. Uh, yes, it's, uh, you know, we, we'll try to help out in any way we can. And uh, you'd be surprised at some of the calls we get. I wouldn't say there's much we can't come help somebody with. So yes, it's very much true. How often it happens at other places, I couldn't tell you. I, I'd recommend sedating the cat beforehand. <laughs> you Well, you gotta put on your coat and your gloves because they latch on, there's no two ways about it. Yeah, trust me, I know, without the gloves. <laughs> so uh, we certainly appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.